Hello friends. This is Sonia from An Enthusiastic Reader. I'm here today to do a Friday Reads. It's been a few weeks since I just sat down and let everything just come right out of my brain and talk to you about what I have finished recently, what I'm reading now, and what I plan to read in the in May and then just a little bit beyond May. And at the very end, I have a very short rant slash discussion about the Blake Bailey, Philip Roth biography dust up. That's what we'll call it. Um, and it, it's going to be brief. So I just have a couple of thoughts and I'm going to stick those on at the end. So if you are totally sick of hearing about that situation, you'll see it when I get there and we can say goodbye. But I just wanted to say a couple of things. Anyway, I want to first talk about what I recently have finished. And the first book I want to talk about is Adam Bede. I think I may do a full book report about this uh, in, a, in another video soon. So I just want to say I really enjoyed it. For me, the book is mostly about the women and their roles in, in uh, this little provincial uh, farming agricultural town that is in England. I mean, there is a big cast of characters as in most George Eliot novels, but the key characters I was most concerned with were Adam Bede and his brother Seth a Methodist preacher who is a woman named Dinah, and then a, a girl who lives on a neighboring farm. She is a, an orphaned girl who lives with her aunt and uncle, and she is just blossoming into this beautiful, gorgeous girl, and her name is Hetty, and Hetty is kind of vapid. She isn't particularly well-rounded as a character. She's very... Uh, just silly. Uh, she hasn't been given the tools to really understand what a valuable life would be like. And she falls in love with Arthur, who happens to be the heir to the estate where they're all entailed. So she is very attracted to him. In the mean, in meanwhile, Adam Bede is very attracted to Hetty. And so there is a triangle. I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but there is, you know, but Arthur has the world on a string, his whole life ahead of him. Everyone's looking forward to his grandfather dying so that he can uh, claim the estate. He's turning 21 after all. He's a man, he's of age. They have a huge party for him, like a couple of days worth of feasting and parties because he's turning 21. And so everyone looks at him like he is a very, you know, the golden child of this area that's gonna save everybody, make life better for everyone. And then he notices that Hetty is attracted to him and then things happen. So I really enjoyed the novel as a whole. I did have a couple of questions and uh, Kim from Middle of the book, book March was nice enough to chat with me a little bit about our feelings about the ending of the book and that really helped too. So I may make another video about this later because I there is a lot to mine in terms of if you wanted to apply a feminist critique to this book, which a lot of people have already done, but I haven't. So um, my whole take on the novel is that it's kind of a meditation about what are women for? You know, how do they fit in? When are they not valued and when are they valued? And what contributions are they allowed to make to help people? Or if they become too powerful, how easily are they cast aside? So that's my overall impression of Adam Bede. Uh, the next book I want to talk about is called Early Morning Riser by Katherine Heine. This was a delightful book. I enjoyed it so much. It's kind of set in the tone of a romantic comedy, but it's about, it is about romance, but it's also about found family and building a community. The main character is a, uh, an elementary school teacher. She's quite young. She moves to the northern part of lower Michigan. I saw somebody make a correction about this in Goodreads because I, I said Upper Peninsula, but it's the northern part of the Lower Peninsula. She lives there. She, you know, she moved there to become a teacher. And then she falls in love with an, an older man who is like the Lothario of the town. He has slept with every available woman who would have him, basically. And she falls in love with him. They have their ups and downs. And then uh, a very um, 
catastrophic event takes place and it changes everyone's lives. And, but it's just a very sincere, warm, loving, funny novel. And there are lots of great observations about what it's like being a teacher and her um, evaluations of her students and how she learns the personalities of her students and what happens, her relationship with her mother, which is a little bit um, off. She has a best friend who's in a bluegrass band and takes her mandolin with her everywhere and will play at the drop of a hat any song of that is appropriate to the mood of what's happening. And she has a kind of a rival woman who she becomes friends with begrudgingly. And so it's just, it's all about different relationships and it's not all about romance. I mean, that is a part of it, but I really enjoyed this. I just couldn't stop reading it. Um, actually, I listened to the audiobook and it was great. So if you're looking for something a little bit lighter, a little bit, something that will make you feel warm and happy, but it's definitely for adults. It's not a children's novel uh, that's disguised as an adult novel, as um, which I don't like, but this was just wonderful. So Light Fair, Early Morning Riser. Those are the only two books I've actually finished since I have talked to you the last time. I'm currently reading the Country Girls trilogy with Sean, Sean the Book Maniac. We have finished two of the three novels in the trilogy. We're loving it. It's so well written. Uh, Kathleen and her friend Baba and their landlady and the men in their lives. And I'm, I'm just so invested in the story. And it's, it's been one of the best things I've read in a very long time. So I'm looking forward to finishing up the third novel. I am doing a reread of a book called Angels on Toast. I was kind of trying to evaluate books that I had read that fell into the 1900 to 1950 category for that read along that's happening and came up with some suggestions. I don't know if I'll get around to making that video, but I saw Angels on Toast as one of the books that I really liked. It was written in 1940 and it's kind of a madcap American dream, American tragedy story. It's very funny. The writing is great. And it's about, you know, these men who are in like corporate America uh, in sales and um, they're both, they're married, but they uh, chase the skirts of all the girls. They have mistresses. And so it's about all the competing personalities and situations for these people. And I wanted to read you just a little snippet because that doesn't sound great. I mean, it's like something you probably read, think you've read before, but I don't think you've read a book with the language of Don Powell. All right, I wanna set this up for you so you understand the context of the passage I'm reading. There is a main character named Lou. He's married to a woman named Mary who is very rich. She comes from a, an old money family and she has an uncle named the judge who does not like Lou and they run in, into each other on the train. Now Lou has lots of girlfriends and he's just always out on the make when he's not at home with Mary. So here's the judge, the description of the judge that Don Powell has written. His voice, earnest, unctuous, and benevolent was a pat on the head, a well, son, are we sorry now we smoke the cigarette voice and his hmm was a kindly purring growl that finished off a vague sentence punctuated a phrase, a stroking, soothing lullaby to suspicion. And in sterner, more official conversations, it was his official seal on the basic authority of his statement. His voice was always prepared with this apologetic butter, though if it had been unmasked and not keyed to the inferior class or age of his listeners, it might have been a harsh whine of intolerance. So every character is looked at with this very acidic eye, and she is like, laser targeting her observations about their behaviors and their motivations and then their follies. So um, I remember really nothing about the plot. I read it several years ago. I remembered loving the writing and now I'm really enjoying revisiting this great novel. I just started yesterday, Justine by Lawrence Durrell. I'm doing a buddy read with Teresa and we decided we were gonna take a stab at this uh, series of books. Uh, I really knew nothing about it whatsoever. I just started it yesterday. I'm not really sure what I'm reading, but I do know that I like the writing. So I will report back on that when we finish with this very short 250 page 
novel um, about the city of Alexandria and some of its inhabitants. I'm listening to Mythos, the Greek myths retold by Stephen Fry. I'm listening to the audiobook. He is such a great writer and it's kind of just a refreshing to listen to the stories of the Greek gods and the Greek myths told in a very funny, witty um, manner, I guess I'll say. But he's a really good narrator of the work and I'm enjoying... Um, maybe I heard these myths or read them when I was a kid, but I've definitely forgotten most of it. It's fun to revisit. I have a net galley proof of a, a nonfiction book called Books Promiscuous promiscuously read reading as a way of life by heather cass white and i've read about a third of it i'm not sure it's kind of a manifesto uh, it's kind of written in a series of her beliefs about reading um, in very stark terms and I'm not really sure it has a narrative thought or it has a overarching argument so i'm not i don't know if i I'm finding myself not really wanting to jump back into it again, although I, I'm interested in it as I'm reading it, but I don't know what her argument is. I'm, I do plan to finish it. It's not very long, but it's not something that's really making me feel uh, connected to what she is trying to say so far. May plans. I continue to, I plan to continue my buddy reads with Sean and Teresa, finishing up the um, Edna O'Brien and the Lawrence Durrell. Um, I, there's a new memoir that just came out that I just got. It's called Bless the Birds, Living with Love in a Time of Dying by Susan Tweet. And she is, she was in Colorado. She was a Colorado writer, a regional writer. She lives in Northern New Mexico now, but her husband uh, was struck with a debilitating disease. And it's about that process of their relationship together. And then as you know, the, her relationship to him as he was dying and what happened to her afterward. But she's a nature writer too. I remember reading some essays about this, so I think she's refined them and put them into book form and really looking forward to seeing how that all came together as a book project. I want to read Clara and the Sun by Kazuko Ishiguro. I um, have heard I've heard so many mixed things about this, so I don't know if it's something I'll like or not, but I I plan to find out. And uh, for book club, we're reading The Painted Veil by Somerset and Mom. So I have a very busy May reading schedule coming up. And I'm also looking forward to a couple of things. Um, I've ordered a couple of Thomas Mann novels because I've never read him and I want to prepare myself for the novel about Thomas Mann that's coming out late this summer called The Magician by Colm Tobin and you know, I have this deep readerly relationship with Colm Tobin. I love his books. And guess what I found out? Jonathan Franzen has a new novel and I have pre-ordered it. I can't wait to read it. All the naysayers be damned and the jacket copy, which, you know, come on, who cares? Jonathan Franzen is going to be his own stuck up, conceited self, but he writes good novels as far as I'm concerned. So looking forward to it. Now we've come to the end and I want to tell you my opinion about what I think about the cancellation of the Philip Roth biography by Blake Bailey. That was a mouthful. Uh, I honestly don't think that they should have pulled publication of this based on all of the allegations of the people who talked about how awful Blake Bailey was. I have no doubt that they're right. I believe them. I, uh, I, I think all of the reviews that I've read, and I've read like five or six reviews about the book itself, pointing out all the places where Blake Bailey carried Philip Roth's water about his hatred for any woman who wasn't just there to serve him on a pretty much sexual level, and that's about it. And as soon as they had any needs or desires of their own, he hated them and then worked up into this enmity and used them in his novels as scapegoats for his own weird, uh, you know, neuroses. And I'm saying all of this as a person who's read a lot of Philip Roth novels and have admired them and enjoyed them and liked them. But I think when you add that biography to Roth's novels and you see what he believed about women and about the women in his life, it just, uh. So 
I don't think they should have canceled the book. I think it should be out there for everyone to read and see for themselves what they think. And by limiting publication to what's been released already, you're creating this commodified object that will be more valuable because it's scarce. And the, just put it out there. It's not going to change the lives of anyone who was hurt by Bailey or by Roth. It's, it's just not going to. It's not going to make it better for anyone. So I don't see the point of that. And that's my opinion. Um, I, uh, I, I'm sure if you ask any woman in your life if they have known a man like Blake Bailey grooming young girls to somehow grooming young girls to think that he's going to be their partner when they turn 18. It just, there's a lot of people out there like that. So um, he's not the only one. And all right, <laughs> that's my opinion. Everyone ha is entitled to their own opinion about this very contentious issue. Um, it's been dominating book Twitter for a while, and I have been really immersed in seeing all the opinions of different players in all the roles. So I'm sure another scandal will come along soon and we will have something else to talk about. And finally, I just want to throw out there that I'm just sick about all the people who are not able to get immunized, all the crises in other countries where there are huge rises in cases and no immunizations, no vaccines available, and poor governmental responses to these you know, cat human catastrophes. And I don't know if we'll ever recover in our lifetimes for sure for what happened in this last 18 months. So ugh, um, just if you're out there and you're not able to get vaccinated, I hope you are soon and I'm thinking about you. And um, yeah, thank you for watching all the way to the end. We made it and I appreciate it and I will be back in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.